Hi guys, today I am going to edit an image in the new Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Creative Cloud. Now as you might know, Adobe have changed their offering of Lightroom to be the Creative Cloud solution and not the Lightroom as we know it, which is now known as Lightroom Classic. Basically, the Creative Cloud is a cloud-based application and it's spread across mobile, web and desktop. Um, I'm opening it on a laptop that I can't use the original Lightroom on at all. It just runs like a dog. It's an old laptop, it's not very powerful, and generally I use it as a jump station, as a remote desktop, to my normal PC. So I've opened up the Lightroom Creative Cloud here, and I've chosen an image which um, needs quite a lot of work doing to it, um, so we can go through the various settings in Lightroom Creative Cloud and see how we get on. See how it performs and see how we feel. Okay, so this image I took at Flamborough in Yorkshire. Um, it's of, I believe, Flamborough Head, which is a rock that looks almost like a dinosaur to me. It's very good, a very good composition. Um, I really liked it at the time. And what I did to open this image, I clicked on the plus here, chose Add Photos, and I selected the raw file and then review for import. And what that does is it opens the image and simultaneously synchronizes it with the cloud. So when we've got the image here, we've got some options about the size. We've got one-to-one, -one, which pretty much zooms in to the maximum size of this image that I took. Fill, which fills the screen, and fit, which shows you the full image on the screen. Now, as you can see on the full image, there is some clipping on the sides. Now, it's because I used a very wide angle lens. I used a Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter lens and a screw on filter. And you can just see the edges of the screw on filter here, which is what this black mark is. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop that, which is this crop button here. And I'm gonna pull these corners in just to get so you don't see this. Quick and simple. And then while I'm here also, I will adjust the horizon just to straighten it up because as we know, the horizon sits straight. Um, water does not tip one way. So I'm going to get that straight there. I think that's about right. Let's just double check that again. I'm happy with that. And then we'll go on to our adjustment. Okay, so the first thing we need to adjust is the exposure, which is right at the top here. Now, because I use a 10 stop filter, and I probably didn't leave the timer going long enough, um, it is underexposed. So I'm gonna raise up. As I said, I've purposely chosen this image because um, it needs a, quite a bit of work doing to it. So we get to use a lot of these settings here. So that's exposure rose, rose, risen here. And I'm gonna go down to the contrast. Now I'm not gonna adjust the contrast because I don't think at this point, let's just see, let's, if I go low, not any benefit there if I go high. No, I think the contrast is about right. So let's leave that as is. Now the highlights, I wanna pull them down and what that will do, it will bring out the detail in the sky. Okay. And the shadows, I'm gonna raise those and that will bring out the brightness of all the detail here, of the grass and the flamber head. <clears throat> now for the whites, I will hold the Alt key and that will show anything that's clipping when I click on the white. Now, as we can see, the sun is clipping right now, but you expect that because we're shooting straight into the sun, there is gonna be data loss there. Now I'm gonna pull it up to the right to the point where more clipping occurs. There we are. And then I'm gonna pull it back again because I don't want that clipping because that is basically data loss in the image. So let's pull that back a little bit. Now I am finding this very responsive. Um, if I was using my laptop and using the Lightroom Classic, I would get stutters, I would pull it and we were unresponsive and all of a sudden jerk to one side, completely unusable. This is quite fluid and I'm enjoying using it at the moment. It is just like using my computer. Um, okay, so now down at the blacks and I'm gonna use the Alt key again and I'm gonna pull the blacks back. And what this does, the same as the whites, it loses data, but it brings in sort of a depth to the image. So I don't lose too much data there, so let's just check that. That's about right. And we will move down to the next setting, which is temperature. Okay, so I think the temperature is about right on that. I don't want to change that. And we've got the tint. Now, because I was using a 10 stop filter, you often get color cast. And what that does, especially on my filter, which is a gobe 10 stop filter, 
it adds um, magenta or purple to the image so I want to take that out so if I go to the left away from the purple just get oh, slip of the mouse there a nice image nice without the color cast there now the vibrance I generally raise that around about the 20 mark so let's get that say Okay, I'm going to go for 19 this time. I think it looks okay. It's just bringing out the depth of the grass there. And for saturation, again, I want to bring out the grass, but I don't want to do it too much because I've raised the vibrance, so I'm just going to put three on there. Okay, further down, we've got clarity, and I'm going to raise it up a little bit, and quite a bit. And what that will do, that will bring out the detail in the grass. And I'm not going to touch the dehaze or the vignette. I don't think I need to on this image. Do want to sharpen the image a little bit. Let's bring that to 35. Now we're sharpening. If I hold the Alt key and press it, it will give me a black and white image. And what that will do, it will tell you if you're adding noise and show you the sharpening that you're doing. So I think holding the Alt key, 40 is about right. Okay, now I do want to add some noise reduction here. Now what I generally do is zoom in on the image and see what noise I've got and what I need to um, take out there. So I'm going to go to one to one and that's bringing the image full size and as you can see there is quite a lot of noise there which you often get when you're using a tensile filter especially in low light. So let's add some noise reduction there. We don't need to put too much in because you are compensating. The more noise reduction you add in you do take the grain out but also you're losing detail in the images there as well. So let's go about 30 I think maybe back a little bit to 26 and I think that's a good compromise on both right color noise reduction I've not necessarily seen that in Lightroom Classic I definitely haven't changed this I'm going to leave that I don't want to add green and now we go back to now we go down to remove chromatic aberration and enable lens corrections now as a rule of thumb I generally take both of these um, Remove chromatic aberration. Basically, if there's any sort of fringe or anything like that, I should hopefully get rid of anything like that. And the enable lens correction. Obviously, your lens is a circle, it's a cylindrical object, and when you're taking a picture, you do get some sort of warping there. Now, Lightroom has saved many profile for many different lenses, and by clicking this, it will load the particular profile for your lens. Now, as I said, mine was a Tokina 11 to 16 mil. So let's click that, and you'll see the pictures change slightly removing any warping around the edges so I'm quite happy with this now I've adjusted all the settings that I need to and the crop and what I'm going to do I'm going to add a gradient filter which is now changed to linear gradient in the classic so in the cloud version and I'm going to pull that down just pull it to the sea level and as you can see there I've got a minus half a stop on the exposure and minus 10 on the highlights and that's just brought out a little bit more detail in the sky and that's equivalent to using a glass drop-in filter um, which is a gradient a neutral density gradient filter in front of your camera I didn't use that at the time because I use a 10 stop so I'm using the software version and I think that's done it quite well now there's no done button down here so I'll just click back on my um, other option here and that's added it for me and I think at this point, I'm going to raise the exposure just a little bit. I think it's just a little bit underexposed. And I'm happy with that image. Um, we can click this one here, and that will show us the original. Okay, so we can see there's a lot of difference on a very quick edit going down those settings. It's been very fluid. I've had no stutter. It's been fantastic. Complete difference in contrast to using the full fat Lightroom, the Lightroom Classic on this laptop so all in all I'm quite happy so at this point I would want to save the image so I can click this button here which is share and I can choose save to or share to Facebook so save to save it as a JPEG it's got a folder and I'm choosing full size save saving in the corner as we'd see before and we're done now obviously there is a lot of settings that are missing from here um, some might not be missing and I'm just not noticing them. The histogram isn't there, the hue, saturation and luminance isn't there. Um, 
there is many settings that I can see that just seem to be missing. But for a quick edit, and I'm really happy with that image, I think it does a good job. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.